Before I get started, I want to give a big thank you to the cool people over at Koei Tecmo for providing me with the review code. Atelier Ryza 2 Lost Legends and the Secret Fairy is the latest installment in the long-running Atelier franchise. These games are relatively new to me, but I started to love the series after Atelier Ryza Ever Darkness and the Secret Hideout. I highly recommend playing it if you haven't already, especially if you're thinking about trying the sequel. This new entry brings back familiar faces, offers the same great gameplay experience one would expect, and best of all, introduces a new insanely cute companion. Three years after the events of the first game, Ryza finds herself on another adventure after leaving the ordinary village of Rosenbolden. Tasked with uncovering the mysteries behind the Brunin family jewel, she finds herself in situations more dangerous than what she could have imagined. Despite the seemingly interesting premise, the story wasn't very captivating. It had some decent elements and held my attention long enough to get me through the game, but I wasn't deeply invested. My biggest issue was the stakes weren't raised enough. It felt like business as usual, just another adventure for Ryza and friends where they explore some more ruins. There was little build up to the lackluster climax and no real twists or surprises. Though I wasn't impressed by the narrative, having a strong cast will typically make up for it. Even if the basic plot structure is lacking, characters play an important role in elevating the story by creating interest in other areas. Unfortunately, they also fall short in that regard because their development was pretty weak. The returning cast continues to work towards achieving their goals. Ryza becomes a better alchemist, Claudia a more dependable daughter, Lent seeks strength, and Tao thirsts for knowledge. This is established early on, but that's as far as it goes. There wasn't any additional growth happening on their new journey, so by the end of it all, they're not any different. The introduction of three new characters, Patricia, Clifford, and Suri, would have been a perfect way to show new interesting stories, but they hit the same wall. They're each unique and add to the group dynamic, but I found it hard to connect with them since they're underdeveloped. Take Clifford, for example. He became a treasure hunter after reading a book on the topic and the character I found to be the most interesting. He has a likable personality and it's clear that he loves what he does as he's always talking about the romance of the hunt. However, his motivation for becoming a treasure hunter is shallow. While it's reasonable to say he was inspired by a book, the specific content of what that inspiration was did not get explored. After all, not everyone who reads a book about treasure hunting just decides to become a treasure hunter. Most of the character development happens during side content since the main story focused solely on moving the narrative along. These side events go a bit deeper into a character's background, giving a look at some of the hardships they face, but the problem was that they were overcome pretty easily, causing them to feel less meaningful. The sub-stories also cause some issues with pacing as they can trigger automatically whenever I would visit certain areas in the main city. This made scenes jarring as characters would act very differently from one instance to the next, completely destroying the immersion and any emotion that was built up along the way. For instance, I would run into a situation where Ryza had to go defend the city against monsters and leave in a rush, but then two seconds later, she is just leisurely hanging out in the cafe. If it was a few isolated incidents, it wouldn't have mattered, but it happened far too often to ignore. Although I wasn't particularly impressed with Ryza 2's storytelling, I did like the backstory surrounding the ruins I explored. Memory fragments and physical clues could be found all around which were used as pieces to complete puzzles. Each completed puzzle would give a better look at the history behind the ruins that supplemented what was happening in the main story. They provided extra context that was otherwise missing and added more nuance to make exploration more enjoyable. There have been improvements in other areas of exploration as well. New special items offer fun ways to traverse the landscape so it's not just running from point A to point B. I can use a rope to leap through the air to reach higher places, or dive into the water to discover hidden entrances to new areas. Taking my time to explore each region was rewarding as each location felt unique. There were new materials to gather, tougher monsters to fight, and different landmarks to discover. Best of all, there is a new companion that I can ride. This cute exotic animal turned out to be the best partner a guy could ask for. He can dig for rare items and scare away enemies allowing me to gather in peace. Combining all this with an excellent soundtrack that captured the emotion of an adventure created a nice ambiance that made exploration a delight. The other aspects of gameplay remained the same at their core. There were plenty of side quests to do in town, combat still used a real-time turn-based system, and alchemy was still a huge part of the gameplay loop. 
it was nice that the skills I learned from the first game could still be applied here, allowing me to pick up on things quickly. However, these systems have also been iterated on, and new improvements made the gameplay stand out as the highlight of my experience. For starters, the combat feels much better. Combos have been expanded to include skills, and all attacks can be linked seamlessly together, creating very fluid interactions. I no longer have to choose between which attacks to use, and instead, I can just use them all. Crazy, I know. Then add in the new shift skill that swaps out a character to instantly act, and there is basically non-stop action. Item usage has also gone through an overhaul, and though I wasn't too keen on it at first, the new system is actually an improvement. Core charges are the resources required to use items. Previously, they were obtained by converting existing items. While this had its downsides, it allows CC to be stored and ready to use at the start of combat. Now, starting CC is only available through an upgrade, but it's primarily built up using special attacks, allowing it to be gained without needing to convert items. This is especially crucial because now it's possible to use multiple items at once, which play an important role in the new core special skills. These abilities are triggered when using specific item combinations and would have been less accessible with the old system. A new progression system for core item storage has also been implemented that makes items easier to use. Core items can now be upgraded that provide benefits to CC, such as max capacity, initial capacity, and build-up rate. Core item storage is also no longer attached to weapons, allowing everyone to equip four items at all times, so I don't have to worry about adjusting my builds each time I switch to a different weapon. Like combat, the alchemy system received significant upgrades. It's what I consider to be the most important part of the Atelier games, and a defining feature, so I'm glad there was extra work put into it. New intricacies could be taken advantage of in order to min-max my items. It's now much easier to synthesize high-quality items as the material quality values are added together instead of averaged. While it's completely unnecessary to spend an hour creating a 999 quality fishing rod, I couldn't fight the urge to do it because the option was there. And you know what? It was deeply satisfying. No regrets, 10 out of 10. Would stay up all night to make another fishing rod again. A new type of item called essences have also been added, which allows me to interact with the synthesis process a bit more deeply. There are four elemental essences that can be used to unlock a higher tier in a material loop. For instance, a bomb's strongest effect is fire damage large. But if an elemental essence is added to that loop, the next tier, Crimson Fire, will be revealed, allowing for item effects to go beyond what is initially provided. There are also three advanced essences, but my favorite is the Aether Essence, which doubles the elemental values of all materials, making it much easier to craft strong items. Of course, essences wouldn't feel as special if they could just be used to unlock all the best aspects of an item, so there is a limit to how much I could use. It made me put more thought into what I created that would give me the maximum benefits. Even with its flaws, Ryza 2 proved to be a lot of fun. It brought the cast back together for another adventure, gave me a reason to go exploring the gorgeous world, and introduced fights that were challenging and enjoyable. Sure, the narrative leaves a bit to be desired, but all the gameplay systems complemented and supported each other which made a world of difference in elevating the game as a whole. I spent most of my time in a crafting menu and still had a blast. That's the reason I feel like no other game comes close to creating an experience quite like Atelier. Mm -hmm. 悪くないね。